Hi, welcome back. And now what I'll try to do in this video is a little bit different. It's uh, like never seen before different. And what I'll try to do is give you really close up shots of uh, how I position tool uh, when the wood comes down to the edge and uh, which part of the edge I'm using as well. And uh, I'm going to show you different tools as well. So like skew, gouges, scrapers and all that fun stuff. And uh, of course you're going to see the surface that it's left behind. And uh, of course I'm going to use all of the brains in my phone camera uh, to get the best possible footage so you can really clearly see what's happening and uh, I hope this will help out clear some stuff how I position or how to correctly position uh, tools so uh, if you find this video helpful please hit the thumbs up subscribe that always helps support uh, videos like mine and uh, without any further ado let's hop in Okay, so what I'll do real quick is just round this over so I can show you how skew is positioned. And uh, again, I like to, on smaller diameters like this, this is uh, 50 mil a square blank, I like to use skew to wrap it down. And as you can see, I'm here nice and round and that really does the job really, really quick. And uh, just give myself a little bit more room here. And now I'll position the camera so you can see here how the skew is positioned and which part of the edge I'm using. Okay, so I positioned the camera and uh, you can see the surface that it's left behind. I wasn't careful or anything. I wasn't trying to get a nice smooth surface, so I was really aggressive. Uh, now, the most important thing with the skew, if I'm going, let's say, to the right, uh, then I uh, always use, let's imagine the center line here, going here. So use always from the center line down this edge. If I'm going to the left, then again from the middle, I'm using to the left this edge here. And you'll see once I start to cut where the dust is coming from and uh, that, that way you know uh, where uh, you position the tool. Now uh, I have a different video like going in depth uh, with how to use a skew properly. Uh, so just in this video I'm going to show you how to position it. So what I like to do is uh, go above rotation and you can see here nothing happens, uh, the tool doesn't cut and then tilt it slightly up on its side so you, on this side you have a little gap and you're resting on this part of the skew and now just start to bring up the handle once you get the shavings coming from the uh, lower part, lower half of the tool. So hopefully you see the dust here and that's your sweet spot. Once you get that shaving start to come off then you can move to the right or to the left just to clean up the edge so you can see the dust. Again go above rotation, start to lift the handle once you get engaged the, the surface or the edge and you can move to the left. So again, show you this, clean up the edge, go above rotation, slightly tilt to the right. Uh, if you're going to the right, then you tilt it up to the right. If you're going to the left, then you tilt it to the left. So again, go above rotation, start to raise the handle. Once you get edge engaging like this, and you can see where the dust is coming from. Now, I can position or roll to the left the, the skew and you see how where the dust is coming from, how the edge is changing. Now here I'm at the danger point because uh, there is gap here and this will grab and bring it down. This is where you have a catch. So I'll just bring the lathe down a little bit to show you this a little bit in slow motion let's say or slower. So again this is your safe area and you can see how the edge is now traveling up to the long point up and now I'll have a catch. 
And that's a catch. And we can see nicely torn out uh, grain, uh, but again, we'll clean this up so it's nice and clean. Bring the speed up. And this sort of method bring the edge uh, up rotation, then bring the handle up. That always happens in like milliseconds. It, it's not a long process or slow process. So. And that's now nice and smooth and we'll see without any tear out whatsoever. You can see that's a really nice shiny surface. A little bit of chip out here but that's a little bit due to the grain. So if I go a little bit slower. And what you'll end up is glass smooth surface without any need to sand. Hopefully you can spot that. So let's say I want to roll a bead, so I want to make relief cut here. Again, this is not a tutorial on how to use steel. It's how I position it. So make a nice uh, V and now you can use a uh, planing cut to roll a bead. And this is glass smooth surface or you can use a point, short point. Just clean up the corner and on this side there we go so you'll see to the right is planing cut to the left is using a point and both of the surfaces are pristine doesn't need any sanding you go a little bit better uh, focus you can see that's really pristine surface so hopefully this will help you out positioning skew. Now let's say I want to cut a cove here uh, using a spindle gouge. This is a 12 mil uh, spindle gouge. So you start with the flute closed. Once you have the edge in the wood, then you proceed forward and start to open it up. And I hope you can see, I'll show you which part of the edge I'm using. So just to the right of the very point. Same on the right side. And just blend nicely two surfaces. There we go. So again you'll see really nice pristine surface on the inside and this is pine by the way which you have to cut nice and clean if you want to uh, reduce sanding and uh, if I try to scrape this just grab a scraper so using something like uh, this uh, scraper that many of you may perhaps have you can scrape the surface like this but you'll see to the left the, the surface that it's left behind which is really horrible and here let me just move the camera a little bit so here on the left 
is scraped pine and here to the right is nicely cut pine so hopefully this uh, sort of clarifies or get you encouraged to try traditional tools uh, in terms of like cutting or using gouges and stuff like that in terms of avoiding maybe using uh, carbide scrapers for especially for the spindle on the hardwoods you can perhaps get away because they are more dense and um, they should be able to scrape a little bit easier but if you turn something like pine or anything soft like that or willow um, they can be really uh, horrible uh, with scrapers like this now here at the end uh, let's say I want to round this over for I don't know maybe if this is a lid for the box uh, what I like to use is skew and again you'll see where the dust is coming from and this will be more of a, a planing cut you see here where the dust is coming from and I'll clean that up and you'll see that's really nice clean surface it may have a little ridge here uh, but again it's a really nice cut surface which is important now uh, most of you will probably grab a spindle gouge which is okay and here again I'm using just to the right of the very point see here now how the surface is looking after using the spindle gouge uh, now there is one more tool that I like to use and uh, it's this uh, skew gouge so it has a slight hollow at the top and uh, around 20 or 25 degrees uh, nose angle and uh, it really does the job really well on pine as well again you can see the dust where it's coming from This tool is hybrid between the spindle gouge and skew and usually it leaves surface uh, as that you may be using skew but it's easy to use as spindle gouge as you, you can see here again it's a really nice uh, surface so now we can uh, move to face work okay so what I have here is around uh, 150 mil uh, diameter uh, walnut blank and uh, now usually when I rough out profile I like to use spindle gouge this is something I learned using from uh, my mentor Richard Raffen and really does the job really really well and now the reason you want to use or you can get away using the spindle gouge on the outside first of all it's not big of, of overhang you can see I'm right here uh, uh, where the tool rest is and I'm already contacting the wood on the outside now if this was a big bowl and I was hollowing the inside I would use a bowl gouge but for the outside you can get the tool rest really close to the wood and there is no need to get any like stronger tool uh, but again you can use whatever you like uh, especially bowl gouges or anything like that so uh, you'll see again here where the the tool is positioned and where the wood is coming from so this is now running at 1600 rpm and uh, what i like to do is just to sweep through an arc and uh, i'll just hold it so my fingers don't get in the way so i hope you can see i'm using just to the left of the point of the gouge uh, the flute is facing around 10 o'clock 
to the left. You see, it does the job really, really nice. And we can do this a little bit slower. I hope you can see there's a lot of dust. This walnut is rather dusty. As you can see where the shavings are coming from. So right here you're going to see shavings. You see here. And that's your position or how to position the spindle gouge. Uh, now you can use the wing as well, all of the wing here. Same procedure, I'll actually reposition the camera so you can see a little bit better. So here I can use the wing of the spindle gouge and I'll just bring the speed up again. Again the flute is facing around 10 o'clock, this will be 12, this will be 3, this will be 9 and uh, again between 12 and 9 position at, at 10 o'clock and I can use the wing. Hopefully you see where the dust is coming from nicely. I can take much heavier bites and I usually use the wing to smooth out the uneven bottom or top. See that's without much effort. Now here to smooth out the rest of the bottom. Uh, now just actually drop the rest a little bit down. Now here once I'm nice and true I can rest the bevel here. Again I'll position the gout so I'm cutting at the tip or just ever so slightly to the left. Hope you see that nicely. And that's really nice and smooth. And again, I'll show you this, just clean up the flute. First, close the flute, once you get the bevel, now just slightly open it up and move the handle away from you. And once you get shavings, you can see just above the very point of the spindle guard. And you're getting a nice pigtail shavings. That's pretty much always a good sign that you're cutting nice and clean. As you'll see here, that's pretty good surface straight from the tool. Usually when you use uh, just left of the point to, let's say, uh, rough out the outside, and then usually it's a quite a rough cut. And now to get a nice smooth cut with the spindle gouge, I'll actually have to reposition the camera again. Okay, so to get a nice clean cut on the outside, uh, I'll use a shear cut and again, as I was using here on the bottom, just right of the very point of the spindle gouge. And you usually always start with the gouge slightly closed to let's say nine o'clock. Once you're in the wood, open it ever so slightly and proceed forward. That's really nice smooth cut and I'll go one more time to get here because I, this part here at the rim I haven't chewed up. Get the shavings out of the way. This is where I stopped, but I'm making another clean pass and you can see hopefully this is really polished surface, but I'll get one more cut a little bit further out 
and hopefully we'll see a little bit better what's going on. Now at, the, at this time I'm not looking for any uh, nice shape or anything like that. I just want to show you uh, the cuts a little close. So again, you start with the spindle gouge closed. Then once you're in the wood, open it up. Once you get the shavings coming from or dust just above the very point. Get this little waste out of the way. And now let's do nice clean cut. And you'll see this is really nice and smooth and shiny and I hope you can see that quite cl clearly so it's a really nice surface that you can start sanding with uh, 240 grit without any issue now using a ball gouge it's a same procedure uh, start with the foot closed once you're in the wood open it up slightly And again, nice smooth surface, you can see here. And uh, there is another option, which is for somebody who just start out a little bit more dangerous. And I'll just get you a little bit closer so you can see. Now what I mean by that is you can use just to the right of the point of the gouge. That will give you nice sheer action. And again, you'll see here a really nice smooth surface without any problems. So uh, there is other option where you can use um, the wing of the gouge to shear scrape. And for that you have to drop the handle way down and close the flute. And again, basically you uh, just don't touch with the right wing the wood, but get close. And again, drop the handle way down, close the flute to three uh, to nine o'clock. Again, you're getting these kind of nicely ribbons. It's a little bit different shine because you're scraping or sheer cutting, but you're not riding the bevel at the. Uh, at the nose so it's not as shiny but it's really clean surface and sometimes this will get you out of troubles with uh, difficult timbers that doesn't want to be cut uh, for whatever reason so that's really again nice clean surface and I'll show you this from a different angle I'll show you this from a little bit different angle so again uh, the handle goes way down this is asymmetric grind by the way uh, so handle way down close the flute and again watch out so you don't touch with the right wing the timber and just lightly go and hope you can see the dust on the inside and again that's pristine surface here again, nice clean and uh, with 240 grit or 180 this will be in a in a few seconds nice and clean and I'll just show you that real quick so just to show you the surface that is left behind using these methods uh, here maybe on the camera it does look like it's rough but it's not it's nice and clean but due to grain orientation it does look a little bit different and uh, just with a little bit of 180 grit you'll see this is nice and clean I didn't clean up this top so only this section here so that's 180 and I'll use 
you'll see hopefully the surface that it's left behind with just a, like 20 seconds of uh, sanding you can see that's pristine finished surface so hopefully uh, these methods will help you out at least a little bit to get the best possible surface now uh, let's go on the scrapers now this scraper is called shear scraper it has a 45 degree nose angle and it's this one is inspired by my mentor Richard Rappen shear scraper that he uses and it's an excellent tool to to use to get um, shaping done or the nice finish surface so uh, I have several videos on showing you how to raise a burr how I raise the burr or burnish it uh, but you can use it straight from the grinder which I usually do so I use from the grinder uh, until that burr is gone then I roll it with um, a burnisher and then I'll use the hone for the third pass and then again go to the grinder and uh, you know that constant uh, circle so uh, this is standard scraper it's not negative rake scraper and uh, I find these to be uh, pretty much anything uh, everything that you need in terms of scrapers but I do understand that uh, many don't know how to use it properly and uh, that's why negative rake scrapers are much more user-friendly and I'll show you them uh, I have a few uh, for uh, demo purposes um, that I'm going to show you how to use as well so here let's say I want to scrape lightly the bottom okay, so I positioned the camera so I can use actually the shoe scraper and uh, again you have to have a negative degree angle here so the top of the scraper and the surface here has to be less than 90 degrees so to achieve that and you want to scrape this is the center uh, what I like to use uh, slightly above center line I like to scrape or at the center line don't go beneath that um, so to get that uh, negative angle and to scrape at the correct height uh, you have to raise the rest and tilt the handle up and once you get in that uh, lifted handle position this angle has to be again uh, negative 90 degrees and you have to be on that uh, center line or slightly above and just let the lathe come up to full speed and using standard scrapers it's all about feel and that feels quite good and you'll see the surface again that's pristine surface doesn't need any sanding too much uh, actually it's a little bit rougher here I haven't seen it here uh, hopefully you can see it on the camera hopefully you can see it on the camera here uh, so that's using a uh, scraper flat so it's a little bit rougher here on the side grain but again this will sand out in no time and uh, again this walnut is a little bit like fragile walnut it's not the, uh, the best walnut in the world like some of the other species here that I have so uh, let's use a negative rake scraper now this one is almost square across and this one has um, around 45 or 50 degree in the primary bevel on the bottom and on the top around 15 degrees and um, that's inspired by Steve Jones uh, uh, negative rake scraper sorry and uh, his family used this sort of uh, angles for years so again I, I always in this habit of raising the handle up although with negative rake scraper you don't have to but it's always a good practice now this uh, did not sound uh, that it has a nice sharp burr so I'll just put a fresh one on the grinder now this is nice fresh burr straight from the grinder and now this won't leave any nicer surface but again it's a more of a user-friendly tool rather than standard scraper so 
Uh, again, it's not much difference in terms of surface that you left behind. This one is slightly maybe rougher than with the shear scraper. Now you can improve this surface as you saw with the neg negative rake scraper. It's not the best surface, so but you can improve it by tilting up shear scraper. So I'll just readjust the camera so you can see what's happening. So to get the best possible surface here at the bottom, uh, you can tilt it up on its side. And again, when you tilt tool like this, much like with the skew, you, you use from the halfway point down only this part of the edge. So you'll see where the dust is coming from. Okay, that feels quite good. A little lump at the center, which is much easier to get with the flat scraper. There we are, and you'll see the surface. Again, the the point of negative rake scrapers are they are more user friendly, and you, you can get much less. Oops chance of a catch so just to show you the surface here again it's a little bit rougher here just doesn't want to scrape this area which is quite common on some of the timbers uh, so this area doesn't want to scrape as easily now uh, to get let's say refinement on the outside of the bowl again you can use shear scraper tilt it up on its side and again you'll see where the dust is coming from from the lower edge and uh, this burr has gone now. Now I put the fresh burr, this one is straight from the grinder. It almost like it's whistling. Get uh, around this corner. Again, you can see where the dust is settling, where it's going. And you'll see now nicely shaped outside, a finessed, let's say, and this will take just a little bit of sanding and uh, will be done. Uh, now, just put the tenon and I'll show you the gouges on the inside, and uh, that's it. So, grab a spindle gouge and I'll just put the tenon here. This tenon is just ever so slightly dovetailed um, and I, uh, I can reverse this eventually and uh, if I want to finish it some other day or I can use it as a jam chuck. So let's test out the new VM120 chuck. These are the standard jaws that come with it. Now as always you want to throw up the top here and I can use a spindle gouge, again I'll use just the left of the point. Just drag it across. And start out with a depth hole, I can go to this mark here. And uh, now this is asymmetric grind, so 
Uh, I'll get the camera as close as I can. So I repositioned the camera, I got it as close as I can uh, to the bolt here and uh, this is asymmetric grind so it has um, shorter right wing with a small radius here at this side here hopefully you can see that and the longer left wing here this is from my mentor Richard Rappen and uh, again to hollow this out close the flute to three o'clock once you get in the wood once you're in let's say mil and a half two mil open it up to two o'clock and now you can move forward like this and I'll just clean up the flute and I'll show you which part of the gouge is cutting hope you can see where the dust is coming from so just the right of the very edge so I'll try to show you here where the dust is coming from so I'll clean up the fluid so just right of the very point of the gouge Hope you can see this area here where it's nice and shiny here just get the so hope you can see this area here that is just nice and shiny that part is cutting Again, close the flute, um, once you're in the wood, open it up, you can drop the handle a little bit. And so I'm using just that right of the very edge of the gouge, or very point. So that's really clean surface. It's not sharp gouge or sharp as it could be, but the surface left behind is quite good. And I'll just sharpen it and you'll see a little bit clearer surface or better surface. Okay, so the gouge is nice and sharp. And uh, let's go one more time and hopefully I won't bump the camera. Now, hopefully you can see these line lines here, these here, let's get to this spot where it's a little bit more obvious, so here, 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 they are equally spaced and that distance between each of them is the distance of or length of your bevel here so if I remove that heel a little bit more here have a little shorter bevel you'll see much clearer or smoother surface without these ridges here so I hope you can see I removed uh, the heel a little bit more so let's make one more cut so I'm moving around the camera have to put a, a little bit more pressure okay so that's nice continuous curve on the inside just to show 
show you this. Get a little bit more light inside. There we go. So I hope you can see that's a really nice clean surface all the way around. Uh, I hope this little video will help out with uh, some of these uh, issues and uh, if you have any other struggles in turning world and uh, you would like uh, for, uh, for me to make a video about that, uh, let me know in the comments below. So I hope you like this little video and uh, see you in the next one.